I know it's tempting. So in this video, I'll be giving you five reasons why you shouldn't send out price lists to client inquiries for your photography services. Before we get started, let me go ahead and thank WPPI for sponsoring this video. WPPI is coming February 23rd to the 27th, 2020. That's coming up quick and guess what? Yours truly has a couple different events there. I have one, a platform class that I want you guys to come and join and what we're about to talk about is a little excerpt from that class. And two, we're gonna be doing a fun photo walk where we teach you guys how to create really cool images anywhere. So sign up for both those and I'm gonna see you guys there. Now, let's dive in. There are gonna be a few exceptions to this overall rule that I'm about to give you, but I'll save those for the end of the video. First, let's talk about the reasons why you shouldn't just send out price lists when an inquiry comes in for your photography services. Number one, you are selling a luxury product. It's not just a commodity. Let me give you an example and we're gonna talk about cars because we all understand cars and frankly, I like cars. So if I just want a car that can get me from point A to point B reliably, I have plenty of different options. Something basic like a Honda Civic or a Hyundai Elantra is gonna do the trick. But people go out and they buy things like a Lexus or a Mercedes or BMW or even a Bentley because it's offering a completely different experience than getting from point A to point B. I mean, it does that as well, but it does a whole bunch of other things. Now, along those same notes, when we translate this over to the photography industry, well, current technology means that every single one of us has a nice camera right in our hands, right? Our smartphones are already good enough. They get us from point A to point B. So if a client's gonna hire you, it's because you're offering something that their own cameras cannot. And that's not image quality because most clients can't even tell the difference. So you're offering a luxury product and a luxury experience and that brings me to point number two. A price list cannot convey the experience that you offer your clients. When you send out that price list to a potential client, what you're giving them is a piece of paper and all they're gonna do is look at what's on that piece of paper and the final cost and compare that to your competitor. What's on their piece of paper and their final cost. And they're gonna make a decision on the price that they want to spend. Now, if they are like me, which I guarantee they are, guess how much they want to spend? Zero. How much do I want to spend on a brand new car? Zero. How much do I want to spend on my favorite vacation? Zero. How much do I want to spend for your photography services? Zero. That's what I want, right? Instead, we need to get our clients onto the phone or better yet into our studio so that we can educate them and create a product and solution that they actually value. That brings me to point three. Don't present packages or prices or even focus on that conversation before understanding your client's wants and needs. And here's the deal, I would say that more often than not, especially when it comes to photographers that are not well trained in sales and sales psychology, they make this mistake. They present a price point and they show their package list before they even have a clue what their clients are actually looking for. Now I want you to think about this in another way. In fact, since we're talking cars, let's bring this to the dealership analogy because we've all been in a dealership. We know how annoying that is. So just imagine stepping into a dealership and the salesperson walks up to you, introduces themselves, and then presents to you a car and a price without actually asking you what you're looking for, what you want, or what you need. I'm sorry to say this. Actually, you know what? I'm not sorry because when you realize this, you're gonna become a better photographer by simply understanding that your job as a photographer is sales. You are a sales person. It's your responsibility to dive into the client psychology to figure out what they want, what they value, and to help them find a product that is going to suit their needs. Now, here's the beautiful part. In doing so, this whole process will actually make you a better photographer. Before you even pick up the camera, you'll be a better photographer. That's my promise in my actual lecture. You're gonna walk out of that room a better photographer without ever touching your camera, learning about lighting, changing your settings, anything. This is what's gonna help you. Next, here's a fourth reason why we don't wanna simply send out price lists early in the process. 
because when we send out these price lists or take the conversation towards price too early, we unknowingly train our clients to become even more price sensitive. Then when we start recommending other services and albums and prints and wall art, we're shocked that the clients would ask us about the price or be sensitive towards additional charges. Stop being offended. It's very normal consumer behavior to think price first. And when you present your price list, you're unwittingly playing right into that known behavior and you're reinforcing it. So last, I want you to think this. Before you actually send out a price sheet, I want you to think test drive. This is my fifth, my final kind of idea and point here. It's really not worth learning the price of a car or the options of a car or any of those things when you have no interest in actually buying that car, right? Until you actually find a car that you love, it's not really worthwhile to spend your time thinking about price or how you're going to finance it, what you're going to do with it, what options you want, etc. Instead, a good salesperson is going to help you first to find the car that you love. Then they're going to give you options and present different choices to help you fit that product into the budget that you can afford. Now, sometimes this means that you're going to spend a little bit more than you wanted to. Sometimes this means you'll spend less than you want to. Either way, the salesperson shouldn't be thinking about the final price. They should be thinking about getting you the product that best fits what you need and want. This is exactly what I want to teach you all how to do. Spend time listening to your clients' wants, then present them a product that fits their needs and their budget. If you're creating value and presenting a product that clients actually want, they will modify their budget if needed. In some cases, you might even present the product that is below their budget because that's the one that best fits what they're looking for. As a salesperson, your job and the biggest misunderstanding is that you should be your own client's best advocate. You're there to serve them. You're there to create the product that fits their needs, not yours. So only after this entire process, we've understood their needs and wants. We've created a tailored fit package. We present the solution along with the price point. What are the exceptions? Well, I'm going to give you two exceptions. Look, if you have more business than you can possibly handle, you don't have time to hop on the phone. You don't have time to deal with people individually. You just are dealing with trying to keep up with the crazy demand for your product. By all means, send out a price list. Now, how many of us fall into that category? Not a lot. Along the same lines, if we've tried to get a client on the phone, we've made multiple attempts to get them to our studio in person and we just can't and we're losing them, by all means, email out the price list. But understand this, in either of these scenarios, you're doing so with the understanding that your conversion rates, the people that will be interested in your services is gonna drop dramatically. Because essentially, the only people that want your services are the ones that compared it paper against paper and decided they wanted yours, or the ones that were already convinced in your product in the first place. Look. I could talk about sales and sales psychology until I'm blue in the face. So I'm going to save the rest for the actual platform class at WPPI. So come and join me. If you guys have a WPPI class, it's no additional cost to come to the platform class. And I guarantee in doing so, you're not going to regret it. You're going to walk out of that room being a better business person and a better photographer. If not, I'll give you your money back, <laughs> but you didn't pay for anything because it's a free platform. You know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Also, come and join me on the photo walk. Now, in the meanwhile, you guys can help us out by engaging with this YouTube video and with our channel. So give the video a like and a thumbs up. Go ahead and comment below, subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. And guess what? This entire training, well, it's part of a business series that's available on slrloungeworkshops.com. It gives you a full roadmap and guide to creating the studio of your own dreams. You literally have every resource that you need to start making money and to start making good money. We're talking six-figure, seven-figure income in photography by just following the steps outlined for you. On top of that, we have an entirely free community that's Master the Business of Photography on Facebook. Join that because that's where our ongoing conversation is happening around all the topics that we're discussing in our business courses. That's it for me, guys. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.